thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for what you've done the last six months or so. It has been a hard winter, and um, and I, I was listening to Karen and, and chuckling along with Karen. It's it's so great to have a chance to come together and celebrate the fact that um, what you've accomplished and and what we have ahead of us, uh, and 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 start what's coming ahead of us with renewed vigor. Um, and it, it is kind of sad, though. I I have to. Man, I felt so dated by those songs. I do have tickets. I got tickets to the Neil Diamond concert tonight, and I didn't know that song came out in 1969. <laughs> Where was I in 1969? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. I was thinking of change. Um, somebody sent me this morning in an email a picture of Mershon Auditorium when it was built, and it was open. They had this, this you know, how we do these nice pictures when buildings come together. And do you know when it was built? 1957, it, it sat there all by itself. There was nothing around it. There was a road in front of it that connected to the Oval, and you could, you know, you could turn off High Street and go into the Oval. I was born in 1957, so I, I, now I really do love Mershon. I, didn't, I thought it was kind of a big old beast before, but now I, kinda, I really have an affinity for it. And um, much, much has changed since Mershon has been opened. Uh, the whole arts district sprang up around it. Of course, Sullivan Hall was already across the, the uh, road from it, but now that has changed tremendously. Uh, and a lot of that change is because of the work that you guys do every day. You know, um, I, I was talking to Ross the other day, and they're going to bring uh, chilled water, hopefully soon, from the uh, East Regional Chilled Water Plant into the Arts District, and we'll start to pick up uh, capacity in the Arts District. Uh, all of that, all these things happen because somebody looks ahead and says, okay, five years from now we want to be here, and 10 years from now we want to be here, and, and you guys start to put that in place. So no matter what you do every day, I want you to know that um, we do very much appreciate the, the change that you allow us to have. And another example of that, last night, um, I don't know who in the room was on this email train, but last night about 4.30, <coughs> I started to see these emails coming forward about the retaining wall collapse at East Hospital. Now, some of you have been out to East Hospital a lot, maybe you even work there, and you know that there's that, that beautiful retaining wall that allows um, uh, glass, uh, a glass wall to be at the uh, cafeteria level, down one level below, holds the earth back, nice sunlight comes in. Well, that retaining wall started to fall apart last night, or yesterday. And I started to see these emails, and by about 5.30 when I saw the last one, <coughs> um, they had already planned on getting a structural engineer out to look at the area, make sure that the road was going to be stable. And then at 9.30 this morning, there's probably a group out there already, a group was going to meet and figure out what's the next step and how do we repair this thing. Um, at 6 o'clock, I called the administrator of East Hospital because I was going to commiserate with her about, I'm, you know, sorry this happened, we're on it, Our guys are watching it. Um, she was in a meeting in Chicago. She said, what? I said, uh, the training wall fell down. She said, it did. I said, yeah, it did. And she said, thank God you guys are on that. She said, I didn't know anything about it. And she said, I got to call somebody and find out what's going on back there. Um, and she, and she, she actually thanked me three times for calling her and, and for the work that you guys do every day just to make sure you're on it all the time. So I don't know if you understand or can appreciate how much you are appreciated, but there are people who rely on you every day in little bitty circumstances and in big deals, and, um, and you guys just come through every day. It's, it's, so I just want to close by saying that um, this week, people tell me they really enjoy spring break week because the students are all gone. Yeah. And, and, I, and I was just walking over here, and I was thinking, man, it is really nice here today. <laughs> You know, I didn't, I just stepped across, like students do, I just stepped across the road. I didn't think anybody was going to hit me. There's, there's no traffic. But, but I will tell you that I think the place is really special when the students are here. You know, there is a, there is a heartbeat to the place. Um, there is a, um, an energy to the place. Uh, and uh, I know you guys, you all have to be very careful when the students are here, careful in the way you act careful in the way you, um, you drive, um, and we're all very careful because we want to say, set a great example for these students. These are some of the best and brightest people, young people, in the state of Ohio, and we have the privilege of working with them. 
So thank you for all you do all the time. Um, I look forward to a great springtime and a, um, and a very progressive summer. And uh, I look forward to working with each of you. Thanks very much. All year long, uh, I've been uh, trying to get out and meet uh, with every group uh, in the organization. Uh, there's, you know, when you put us all together, right, there's, you know, maybe 300 people here in the auditorium today, but there's almost 900 of us, so it takes a while to get around uh, and talk to everybody. But it's been a, a great uh, experience for me to do that. And when I do uh, come and talk with people, and now I have some great ideas from Karen, right? I'm just going to make people dance and sing, and that'll be the end of that. Um, but I, you know, I've been, been really talking about three major things, and I want to just reiterate those, uh, those topics uh, right now just to kind of shape up the year for us. And the first, of course, is the, uh, the energy project that uh, really kicked off uh, a few weeks ago. The second is our construction projects in general, the work that's been done on campus, uh, just the extraordinary uh, accomplishments of the last year, particularly, frankly, in completing uh, the new James and getting that hospital open. Um, and then the third is uh, our efforts towards integration. And by integration, we talk about putting the um, combining our forces together, which, you know, in a very practical way we have done, but obviously we've had our challenges. So those are the three things I want to touch on uh, right now. And, and because I'm so tech savvy, you know, there's going to be videos involved so as part of that. But let me talk first about the energy project. You know, this is something that, uh, again, kicked off last month. It's, uh, it is a very uh, a big undertaking, and it's very early in that process, uh, but uh, you can tell by the efforts that university leadership have made from the uh, president's office to the provost to uh, uh, so many of the senior university uh, leaders that, you know, the idea about looking into this kind of initiative uh, is, is an effort that's intended to be very transparent and, and very uh, broad in its inclusiveness. And by inclusiveness, I mean just sort of getting the kinds of feedback and input uh, from the entire university community that, that, um, that really is going to be necessary to see if this thing is going to go forward at all. So what are the components of the energy project? You know, we've talked about this uh, a lot before, but, you know, the idea is, uh, you know, we to look uh, at the campus at large uh, around the question of sustainability, around the question of energy management, around the question of energy purchasing, and around the question of energy distribution. So it's a very, very broad look. And you know, for the university, generally, you'll hear people say this, you know, you know the, the university spends about annually over $100 million in energy. Uh, energy acquisition, energy distribution, and energy costs. So it's a big, big part of the university operation. And the way that it kicked off uh, uh, began back in February, and I won't read all this to you, but every one of us, I mean, can you imagine? This is really very unusual. You know, every person in the university was sent this email from the provost. And the provost, as, as not only the chief academic officer of the university, but the um, uh, really one of the chief fiscal officers of the university, um, it ad addressed every member of the university community to, to let us know and to let the entire university community know that, the, uh, that Ohio State was going to embark on looking into this process. So that was the first kickoff of that. And then uh, to make sure that you know, we had as much information as we could at any point in time, uh, they established uh, an energy management web page, which is here, uh, and here's the address for it. It's up and running now. When you go to that uh, web page, um, you really see an overview of everything that the, uh, the project might encompass. And again, we're very, very early uh, in this process. And you would see You would see, for example, I actually learned uh, yesterday from our communications team that you should put the, on a, on a, on a slide, you should put the uh, uh, directionals on the right side 
And the text on the left side, I have no idea why. But, but you see, the, uh, they're, they're, they're capturing here on this web page uh, all the information relating to the project for everybody to have a chance to look at. So if you saw the, you know, if you wanted to read the RFQ, the RFQ was published, posted uh, in mid-February. Um, you have a chance to read it. Frequently asked questions, you have a chance to read those questions. And then if you just wanted to look at the overall project fact sheet, which many of us have looked at because we've talked about this a lot, you would click on that button and you would see this quick summary of what this project is about. And, and again, you know, the, the idea is to look at each of these components, leasing the energy facility, energy conservation measures, you all might recall, uh, since 2012, since 2012, we have been really working as hard as we can on energy conservation measures for this massive, massive campus. So um, the energy supply and affinity opportunities, which are like development opportunities for the university. So as much information as is possible is uh, provided on that website. And in addition, there's uh, an address and again, you can see this, you don't have to write it down, but there's an address for everybody in the university community to ask their questions about the project. And, you know, not, I will tell you right now, not every question has an answer right now. I mean, this is really very early in this process. Uh, the, you know, we're not even, we won't know until spring when the, um, uh, if there are any companies that are interested in, and developing any kind of partnership, and that's just if they're interested. So, so it's going to be a process that we work on a long time. There are already uh, so many groups around the campus that are engaged in this uh, effort, and they involve faculty members, they involve the presidents and provost council on sustainability, which right now, and you know, Aperna, I know she's here because I saw her. Yeah. But, you know, we, we know Perna and her team are, uh, are really strong leaders on that council. That President's and Provost Council on Sustainability is right now working on a project to develop sustainability goals for the entire campus. So not just energy conservation goals, but how can, how can the campus convert itself into uh, a global campus for change and a real icon for sustainable initiatives in every way, shape, and form, in teaching and in research, uh, yes, and in operations, you know, which, of course, we touch more closely. So it's a, it's a massive, massive effort. There are other groups, organized groups around campus. One is COPE, Council on Physical Environment. There's uh, uh, faculty members that specialize in energy that are looking at this. Obviously, there are a number of uh, our folks that are engaged and, and working on looking at this potential. So we will see at, in spring, we will see in spring when the, uh, when the qualifications come back, if there are companies that are interested, and then that will uh, be a decision point and, and an opportunity to look to see whether there's a next step. So I know we've had a lot of talk about it, and again, I know there's uh, potential for a lot of questions. All questions are good, but all questions don't have an answer right now. And, and this is really uh, a great vehicle to make sure that uh, if you do have questions, uh, that, that you know, we can see them in a broad way across the university, so we're not looking at this in isolation. So that's the energy project. Then, uh, projects in general. We overuse the word projects here, but I, you know, I like the word. So talking about what are the most significant projects uh, we have uh, really uh, taken care of this year, and, and they are amazing, and they, of course they start with the, with the new James. At more than a million square feet, the new James Cancer Hospital and Solov Research Institute at Ohio State is the third largest cancer hospital in the U.S., and it's among the first to dedicate entire units to battling specific forms of cancer. Each floor is unique because of the 21 floors. Each one's going to have a particular type of cancer, and we'll have physicians there that treat just that type of cancer. The second floor, in fact, is an architectural feat. It's home to one of two radiation oncology centers in the U.S. that are two stories up. Most are built underground, but here on the second floor, patients, families, and staff have outdoor views overlooking a park. 
Sunlight has been shown to have a positive impact on recovery. It's a theme, in fact, for the entire building, which sits at a perfect angle to provide sunlight in every patient room, but not on the patient. The most unique feature isn't about the building, but who's in it? Each floor includes patient rooms, education centers, and research space side by side. The idea is to provide interactions that inspire. I think this kind of integration of research with the patient care right on the floor is really the future uh, where all hospitals will want to be because it's becoming much, much easier to take that work on the laboratory bench and bring it to the patient. It's a lot quicker, a lot faster. The hospital's focus is on precision cancer care, meaning doctors will use genetic testing to develop individualized therapies for each and every patient. We are always thinking about the patients that we're trying to help. When you're doing translational research that's connected to someone, you're going to work that much harder and be that much more dedicated. It may be one of the biggest cancer hospitals in the country, but doctors here say attention to the smallest details is what really sets it apart. At Ohio State's James Cancer Hospital and Solov Research Institute, this is Clark Powell reporting. For those of you uh, here that uh, were directly involved uh, in, in project management and oversight of the James Hospital, beginning with Paul Sherwood here and the rest of the team, raise your hands and thanks a lot, everybody. It was just a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous effort. <laughs> well, really, we'll never see anything bigger. It really is, uh, it really is quite, an, quite a construction accomplishment. Um, a little closer. Uh, uh, actually not that much closer, but uh, moving over to the campus area, this is a, a video uh, about the uh, new student success library uh, over at the uh, Ag Administration building on, uh, anybody here that's uh, regularly in the Ag Admin building? Mike, Mike is regularly here. So, you know, this, this is a project, uh, I mean, it's just over, overall in the year we completed over 400 projects. And here's an example, and it's an example of what Karen talked about, and it's an example of the great work our uh, project staff does. But it also, it also shows how students are changing, because libraries really aren't libraries uh, anymore. Hello, I'm Stacy Sager, a senior studying agricultural communication. I had the honor to serve on a committee that brought together students, staff, and faculty to come up with a new plan for a student success center for the College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences. The students wanted a space where they could study, hang out, maybe grab some coffee and a snack. The student success center that we're opening very shortly gives us just that. The first component is the, ca the cafe that's coming very soon. It's going to allow us to have a place to pick up a light lunch or even that coffee to get us through the day. We also have opened up a patio that's going to be gorgeous when we finally hit that springtime. It'll give our students a chance to study outside, soak up a few rays, and enjoy the beautiful Ohio weather. Now let's check out the Student Success Center that we've all been waiting for. This Student Success Center is very open. It allows our students to work together in groups, have a place to study, or even just hang out. There's public computers and printing, which is exactly what our students needed. The Student Success Center also has five collaboration rooms. This will allow students to work together in groups or even visit with an employer, maybe prep for an internship or have that interview they've been dying to have. Each room is also equipped with whiteboards and a TV for projecting. We even have one special room that has video capabilities so we can Skype with other campuses to collaborate with more people than just the ones here in Columbus. The open windows allow for natural light and give us the really cozy feeling we want when we're spending hours studying. We're also really excited about the fireplace. It'll give us another place to hang out and gather together. Now let's head upstairs and check out the final part of the library. The top floor of the library provides us with a little quieter space to study. Although we only have about a third of the books we had in the old library, our students have complete access to check out any of the available books that they need. We're really excited and honored as students to have a new place to study, gather, connect with employers and faculty. The CFAS Student Success Center is an opportunity and room that we've been waiting to open. We can't wait to use it.
So it was interesting to me that uh, uh, Stacy talked about the fact that there was a third, uh, a third of the books in the new library that were in the old library. And, and I, we see that experience repeated over and over again, that uh, like us, our students are going electronic as they research and look for data. And it's, you know, it, it, the, other, the other thing that is so intriguing to me, and Jay mentioned it when he was talking, and Karen mentioned it a couple of times when she was talking, was we are so big. We are just so big that things happen all across this campus that one of you in this room or one of your colleagues touches or, or is involved in. But it's very hard to share across campus uh, everything that is going on and happening. So we just really just have to look for uh, some examples to, uh, to really um, emphasize how important and how vital the work we do is. So here's my last project, and I talk about this project a lot when I get out, uh, out and about meet uh, with you all, and that's the CBEC project, which uh, opened up this fall and uh, opened up right, right this semester, excuse me. And we'll see the, uh, the North District student uh, residence transformation open up uh, for the first time next fall. But here's our, our second biggest project. And frankly, this building is so massive, CBEC, it is one quarter the size of the new hospital. And it's really almost hard to believe how much the construction of the hospital has dominated everybody's minds and imagination. But this project, which was just delivered flawlessly, uh, is a thing of beauty. So here's the, here's the CBEC. four existing buildings where we're sitting right now. We needed better space but not more space. Rather than build two buildings, we combine them into one facility. That's a big idea in the framework plan. It's a lot of glass, which is a green idea that would let light into the building. It's a very flexible building. And it's more modular and that's a new idea in lab design these days of having that kind of flexibility and openness. The tower, which is the office tower, is a little bit taller than most buildings on campus. So it creates a focal point. There's a great new student lounge that's at the top of that tower. Uh, you can see all over campus. It's, it's a secret because everybody will want to be there. There's a lot of really good areas for students to study, to work together, to collaborate. We have a much better uh, unit operations facility that we're here in right now uh, that will allow for students to get more hands-on and better hands-on experience. You get excited, you get inspired, and it's a really good feeling to have such great facilities to work with. So some very, very positive things have happened. Of course, we learned along the way that we have you know, two completely different HR systems. We have two completely different finance systems. We have two completely different uh, work order systems. We even have different timekeeping systems. And those, not to mention, two completely different IT systems. And those, uh, those issues and those differences have really been a challenge, have really been really a challenge on, both on a technical level uh, and otherwise to, to get across that border. And so uh, even though we're kind of surprised we're still talking about it, uh, now two years later we're still talking about it. But we do have uh, first and foremost in our minds to get this one finished up. You know, the, uh, now I forgot my slide, I apologize for that, because I did want to talk about um, 
the, the efforts that have been made, particularly uh, in the project management teams and in operations. So the groundskeeping crew for the medical center has moved over and integrated into the landscape crew. Hope some of you guys are here. The construction management teams uh, have integrated to an, into one single FDC team that uh, for the medical center now can deliver projects, scoop the nuts. The dispatchers have joined at Sarah Stu facilities and the vehicle and equipment repair teams have combined. So those are some real world accomplishments uh, that, that we have done. To, to get forward, to move me one forward, uh, what we really want to try to do now is we want to try to wrap this project up by the fiscal year, the beginning of the new fiscal year, which starts in July. And we're continuing every week, every week, every month to collaborate with IT, with finance in both the medical center uh, and on campus with HR to try to kind of knock down, you know, what I think of these technical barriers, but they really have been real challenges. So it's still very much uh, in our minds and on our work plate to get those, get those finished. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about flood mitigation, but I decided not to, sorry. So let me go on to campus campaign. The campus campaign is underway. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to give to uh, the university. It happens every year, just like Operation Feed happens every year, you know, and, and one of the things I really love about FOD, going back to Operation Feed, is how generous you all are at Operation Feed. I can never get over uh, how much people put into, put into that effort. Campus campaign is, uh, is again, it's a giving campaign for the university. Uh, each year we set a kind of a target uh, to try to get uh, uh, folks involved in participating. I think this year our administration and planning target is 43%. Uh, so 43% part participation in any uh, dollar amount whatsoever. There are many parts to Ohio State, many layers that give it strength. We, thousands of faculty, staff, and students do thousands of different jobs that gives this university its depth, its richness. We know Ohio State is not just one place. Our work can be found in every Ohio county, in Arizona or Florida, in Ethiopia and Brazil. We work in labs and offices, kitchens and classrooms, in boardrooms and in barns. No matter what we do or where we do it, we are united in support of our great university our opus. The kind of work we do is as varied as we are. We bring Ohio State's mission to life on a scale that is second to none. When you put the pieces together as a whole, Ohio State is a work of art. And it is our work together that makes it a masterpiece that it is. We are Ohio State. Show your support for what we've created. Give to Ohio State. Give to Campus Campaign. John Santini, are you here still? Were you here? <laughs> John Santini of our, our, our uh, operations group is actually, I think, on the campus-wide uh, uh, campus campaigns uh, committee. So that's, that's really great. I really love to see our folks up involved in major university activities. So you'll be hearing a lot, and I'm sure already, uh, uh, to uh, encourage us all to support campus campaign. So I want to close uh, by, uh, I, Again, it's, it's so difficult to, uh, to go down the line of thanking people uh, for helping FOD. And over the five years that I've been in this job, we have seen a lot of change. And one of the changes we saw early on uh, was the administration and planning group that Jay leads, you know, moving over to the shared services support groups, both for HR services and for communication services and for IT services, so that administration and planning had one umbrella of services. And I just, I cannot be more grateful really for the support that uh, Laura and her team and uh, Dan and the communications team have given us through, all throughout the year, but uh, uh, in particular during moments like this in the year when we really need those support services to come together for us. So that, so I do uh, really extend my appreciation. I know I saw Laura here somewhere, but Becca, I'll pick on you because I can see you, but I really do want to uh, say thank you so much. It's a transition that could have been a tough one, but it turned out to be a great one, and the support that we've received uh, is, has really been invaluable. So then I asked, or I asked our communication folks if they could put together for us sort of a potpourri 
of uh, some of the videos that we've used throughout the year and some of the videos that have been made throughout the year, just sort of as a celebration uh, of all of us. Uh, and so that's what, that's what I'll show here in a minute as soon as I find that clicker again. Uh, but I do, uh, as always and as everybody does, I want to thank you for this. I hope uh, as, as we leave today, we'll have a, you'll have a chance to uh, take one more look at our national championship trophy and, and try a selfie, my selfie just sucked. It was so bad. I don't, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, but I'm going to try again on my way out. And um, there also will be national championship posters uh, on a first come, first serve basis on the way out. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this video. Please know in our hearts we're just so grateful uh, for everything uh, that we've accomplished this year and that we have to look forward to in the coming year.